and welcome to this episode of Everyday Enchantment. I have the distinct pleasure today of having Renee Sager here, and we're going to get into a juicy conversation about emotional eating, building self-trust, talking about things that self sabotage our relationship with our bodies and food. And for those of you who don't know Renee, Renee is a certified health and life coach. She is an emotional eating expert, and she is all about the go-getter women around the world. She wants to help them live a powerful, authentic life free from all the obsession. And I say amen to that. Let's ditch the obsession so we can actually invite more enchantment in. So welcome to today's episode. I can't wait to get started. Greetings. Hello. Welcome, Renee. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. And this is a topic near and dear to my heart, emotional eating, authenticity, obsession with food, because for me, in just kind of my work in the world, I feel like there's so many of us, so many women that we get so focused on fixing our bodies, fixing, you know, if I just eat this or figure out this right, diet, all of it, it just becomes this energy, like energy suck for us. And then we don't actually get to live the lives that we're meant to be living, being in mm -hmm. service, having more fun, mm -hmm. all of the things that come when you, I don't know if you, you, you tell me if you make peace permanently, but you find yourself in a more peaceful place with it all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's an, the word I tell clients this, and sometimes I'm like, don't take this the wrong way, like as, as a deflating statement, but like the work doesn't ever end because yeah. we are forever evolving and the mm -hmm. circumstances in our life are forever changing, like going through menopause, having children, having children leave, starting new job, traveling, like all of these things are always happening. And so it's just this kind of letting go of that death grip of like, okay, this is how I do it. And this is how I eat. And this is how my body looks. Ah! And it's just like, oh my God, let's chill out. And, you know, we're sold this message that it's almost like if you're not like force, 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 control, control, be skinnier, be smaller, per per perfect your meal plan. It's like, am I being irresponsible? Like, am I, am I being lazy? Am I not, mm -hmm. am I doing it wrong? Because so much of that is fed into our brains that like, this is how yeah. you be a good woman. This is how you do things correctly. <laughs> I love it. And you're right. So tell me, how did you get into this particular line of coaching and work and, you know, just being this kind of flavor of magic on the planet? I'm, I'm always interested in what brings people to this space right where they are. Yeah, I had a very long and drawn out complicated relationship with food and body starting around 14, 15, and it escalated very quickly and hung around for a very long time. You know, I shifted from just like wanting to get healthy, quote unquote, wanting to tone up, quote unquote, like so many of us ladies do. And before I knew it, it had taken on a life of its own. And then I, I was slammed from just caring a little bit about how I ate and wanting to work out to anorexia, to bulimia, to binge eating, to then mm -hmm. swapping it out for drinking, to then mm -hmm. swapping it out and for relationships and just this like, go, 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 go. And I had yeah. tried everything. Like my food was just the constant thing that I was like, why can't I figure this out? And it was really frustrating because I had so, so many points and periods of my life where everything was so good. Like mm -hmm. I just thought if I just didn't have this food thing, my life would be so great. And so I, you know, I tried d training plans, macros, uh, food addicts, 12 step meetings, uh, rehab centers, therapists. I mean, you name it. I was, I will dance around in a room and just murder a chicken or whatever you got to do to like make this food stuff go away and like be quiet in my brain and mm -hmm. nothing, 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 nothing worked for 15 years, thousands wow. of dollars, so much time and money. And so I finally got to the point where I, I like teach my clients ultimately what I went through, which is developing trust with yourself, mm -hmm. right? For, because that whole time, the and all, through all of that, it was all you can't trust yourself. You can't trust yeah. yourself to be around food. You can't trust yourself to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. And listen, I had years of evidence to back that up that I could not be trusted. But what I couldn't see was that 
Also, the common denominator was always trying to eat less, trying to shrink myself. Those were the things fighting against everything I wanted. And so when I started to let go of those things, magically slash not so magically, everything else started getting easier. I started to develop trust with myself. I stopped eating copious amounts of food alone in my car in a parking lot. I stopped Mm -hmm. obsessing over my body in the mirror. Like I started really settling into who I was and just building so much more confidence and just trust with myself. Yeah. I don't know if you know this about me, but years ago, I probably had over a hundred pounds on me. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I said, as much as I felt like I was shrinking, like the essential me, like my soul was just like dying. My physical body was like, and I, and I definitely was trying to control things, but my body just got bigger. It was almost like my body was in this revolution or like radical state of like, you will not shrink yourself off this planet. Like rebellious. Taking, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I will take up all the space Mm -hmm. until you figure out how to, to be comfortable taking up space on this planet. Like I will mark you out here. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I get that. I completely, that rebellious tendency is really loud in a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So I think that makes perfect sense. So I'm curious, as somebody who's dabbled in this for a long time myself too, how do you start? Like if somebody's listening and they're thinking Mm -hmm. about, oh, self-trust sounds really nice in theory, but where does somebody start in terms of, you know, maybe, I don't know, taking a step or doing something different than they've been doing for, like you said, 15 years. I I bet there's people listening that have been doing it for 40 or 50 years. Yes. And it is a sneaky son of a gun, like the Mm -hmm. the self-doubting. And so the first thing I would say is try not to get wrapped up into the real quick fix. Not that this has Mm -hmm. to take forever, but like I just see so many people getting marketed to of like just 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And like you can definitely make a big change in three months. But when we get in that, we're like, okay, why isn't it happening yet? Why isn't it happening yet? Instead of just being in it instead of just letting ourselves figure it out. We're like, okay, when's it going to be over though? Like, when am I going to get past Mm -hmm. this? So the first thing that I would suggest is to, I mean, like really notice where your shoulds are, Mm -hmm. where are your shoulds? And this is, this is as simple as the type of cereal you eat, the -hmm. way you cook your eggs, the Mm -hmm. shoes that you put on in the morning, the way that you style your hair, the music you listen to, the workouts that you do. Why are you doing it? Cause you want to, because you enjoy it. Do you actually like working out in the morning? Do you actually like working out in the evening? Do you actually like doing this job or reading these books? Or is it because this is what I should do to be a productive member of society? This is what I should, this is what someone like me is supposed to do. And it's, it's an illusion. It's such, it's such an illusion that has been forced down our throats for years. And it's, it's finally, it's starting to question those, you know, like Mm -hmm. something that I tell my clients is it's kind of like pulling back the curtain and there's an entire universe back there. But women, especially when we get so wrapped up in food and body, like just, we have this tunnel vision of like, just eat perfect and keep the perfect body and, and don't upset anyone. And then everything's going to be good. And it's like, where did this come? We have got to break this back. Another example I call it is like this glass box of expectations Mm. that we have for ourselves because we live in this very suffocating box that we can't see. We don't know that it's there. We're yeah. aware you're so wildly underestimate what you're capable of because you keep yes. bumping up against this glass box. And when you finally break through, it's like, oh my gosh, that's when stuff really starts getting good and coming together. That reminds me how how you describe that in the scene at the very beginning of Untamed by um, oh, Glenn Doyle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With the cheetah uh-huh. that's in the yep. cage and yep. the daughter, and I can't remember her daughter's name is like, mom, I don't think that do- that cheetah is happy chasing the bunny or whatever it was doing. Yeah. And you're right. We just keep it ourselves in this space. Yeah. And as much as it makes us, again, we think whatever this fix is, is going to bring us eternal bliss and happiness. Mm-hmm. It's like the cheetah and like being, in the- you're just flailing around or bumping around in the box and you don't even realize now I'm going to bring in another, like the Jim Carrey movie. I can't think of it when he's like living in a created world. Bruce Almighty. No, not that. No. Gosh, the Truman Show. Yes. 
Yeah, I like that movie. Yeah. Yes. When yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's this whole other world. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's that's what I do too, because mm -hmm. I'm asking people to break rules all the time because listening to your intuition, listening to your own body, all of those things are connected. Mm -hmm. And it's not something we got taught. It was not something got encouraged for sure. And I want to go back to something you said a mm -hmm. few minutes ago that I felt really important for, for all of us is this false sense of urgency, mm -hmm. right? So you're mm -hmm. like, the, the lists or the the taglines, do this in 30 days, do this in six months. Mm -hmm. And it's this false sense of somehow like gearing up, like we have to like rally all our energy. We mm -hmm. have to do all of this stuff. And that this is somehow going, this outside thing mm -hmm. is somehow going to solve whatever this, you know, why are we trying to fix ourselves in the first place? Yeah. And you're right. You're just on this wheel that never actually goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love the questioning the shoulds yeah. because I did that recently, probably like six months ago, I was really into spin classes, not Peloton, but just into my own little thing. Mm -hmm. And I was enjoying myself. And then all of a sudden my shoulders were aching and my body wasn't feeling mm -hmm. good. I was like, Oh, I really should. I love this. Right. I'm telling mm -hmm. myself I love this. Yeah. And I'm like, my body doesn't feel good anymore. Mm -hmm. And I really had a kind of a, a moment for a while of giving myself permission mm -hmm. to say, okay, well, what would you like to do instead? Rather than this mindset that I don't think I'm the only one that has, like stick with it, yeah. stay committed. You're yes. failing, you're quitting, right? You're yeah. quitting this. And so again, I'm the problem because I'm quitting rather than whatever the belief or the rule is in the first place. I know. And women are so good in not a good way of like, of just doing this, of pushing yes. through any pain and discomfort and like, yes. well, this is just what I should do. And exactly kind of like what you were touching on. Well, this is what I should do. And I think that the, the point the, or the fear is that if they don't, if they're like, okay, so what else do we want to do? That mm -hmm. it's failure or that they yeah. will never, like if you were to get off the spin bike, you're like, well, now I guess I just eat chips and lay on the couch all day since I don't do spin. Like a yes. lot of that all or nothing kind of black yes. and white types of thinking. Yes. I, I realized a long time ago at a coach, and this wasn't even about eating. This was just about productivity because I'm also, I have a slight, have had a slight obsession with doing in my yep. life as well. Mm -hmm. Shocker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I remember her saying like, well, what if you didn't make yourself and again, what came forward is that same thing. Oh, I'm just going to be a sloth on the couch and eat bonbons all day. Yeah. And she said to me, well, what if that's not actually true? Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. It, it, as we want to build this self-trust, it's we've got to look at like, is whatever we're feeding ourselves, and I mean metaphorically here yeah. in terms of yeah. these systems, are they actually true? Because mm -hmm. you're right. We're so good at just believing, believing, believing I remember being a teacher for 10 years. That's how I started my career. And I remember saying to students, like, I don't want you to think how I think. I want you mm -hmm. to think how you think. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn how to be a critical thinker and flush it through your own systems. Yeah. And then again, I do the same thing as a coach. It's not about Renee's way or Stacy's way, mm -hmm. right? It's about finding this place where you actually, it's my favorite Wizard of Oz quote, you had the power all along. Mm -hmm. We just didn't realize it wasn't out there somewhere, Yeah, but it was actually, we've been walking around with it. Yeah. And it's such a, it's, it's so, I think it's so frustrating because it's, tr it, tr it's one of the easiest things because it's, it's us and it's, mm -hmm. and yet it's the hardest thing you will ever do is yeah. to like trust yourself and to let it be easy, yeah, right? There's this, this, this thing of like doing the most. I have to do the most. I have to push the hardest. I have to struggle the most. It's like, oh my God. Like, and I used to think that too. I have to work out the hardest and I really yes. wore it like a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I don't, I do not want to live that life anymore. Like I do not want to be busy from 6 a.m. to 8, 8, 8 p.m. Like 0% of me wants to do that. But before it was like, this is what really go-getter, ambitious women do. This is my badge of honor. I can do more than anyone. Yeah. And like, okay. Like now I just look at people like that. I'm like, all right, I'll see you later. Like I'm going to go get some lunch and watch a movie. Like, I mean, you know, it's just so much more enjoyable. Well, and I think, tell me what you think about this because we haven't talked about this ahead of time, but I think we're here, a lot of us, to help the planet like 
create evolutionary change, mm -hmm. not physical, you know, we've done a lot of physical evolution already as a species and on this planet. And this is that we're not gonna we're not here to rinse lather and repeat the systems that are already in place that mm -hmm. hey if they worked what no you know there would be a yeah. whole different world out there than there actually is yeah and so you're right we have to be willing to your like lifelong practice mm -hmm. and be willing to be in some discomfort around the like it's okay for me to be like, yeah, I am going to be take it easy. And that isn't, if I open my door, that isn't the message bl come blaring in yeah. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's to me, a piece of that self-trust is like, yeah, being okay with it, not being okay out there. In the world Absolutely. Right. Like that's a big thing I say too, is like, it, there, there's the idea that we need to have it together all of the time. And again, mm -hmm. such a wildly unrealistic, unattainable standard for yourself. Yeah. And I think especially now with how prevalent social media is and how frequently we're on it, all we are inundated with thousands of images from the peak of someone's day, from yeah. the high, from the perfect angles and lighting, from yep. the perfect anything, hundreds and hundreds of them as we're scrolling through. And every time we do that, it's just a hit, a hit. I don't look like her. I don't have a relationship like that. I don't make as much money as her. I'm not going on this trip. Instead of like really coming back into ourselves and, and sometimes not being okay. But when we look at all of these things and we see all how every perfect, everyone's everything is in that, that moment, mm -hmm. our brain doesn't register that our, all our brain thinks is they're doing better than me. Why do I suck? Yeah. It's exhausting. Like and we're I feeding it and we're, I mean, talk, Hey, if you just let that out of your yeah. daily diet for some time, yes. I'm sure there's like just some metaphorical weight that we, we would just immediately lose. Well, yeah, your weight, eat, like your yeah. diet, your diet is not what you're eating. It's who you're spending time with. It's the magazines you're reading. It's the yes. podcasts you're listening to. It's, yeah. it's everything. It is. It's food is such a small portion of what your diet consists of. That's so true. So one of the things that caught my eye about you, because we didn't really know each other, mm -hmm. is you are so much, and I'm going to say it fucking fun because I like to cuss. <laughs> so um, I, you, I, the first thing I think I ever saw of you, and it was been a while now ago, you're like dancing, and you're just doing some wild <laughs> video dancing. Yeah. It's not perfect. No. It's like you just being silly and fun. And I was like, that, that energy to me is so magnetic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, then I come to find out, you know, you know, what your work is in the world. And then it made so much sense to me because again, showing people how, what else is possible. Yeah. Because I also think sometimes, and tell me what you think about this is people see that and go, Oh, that's really nice. Renee can have fun and, and be that, but I can't have that for myself. Yeah. People say that to me all the time, Stacey, you're always happy, but that's just not realistic for me. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah. 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 Well, and you have to get to, you have to get over, you got to get over that shit. You got to get over. It's only for them and not for me. Yeah. Because, okay. Like if that's where your thought is, like, that's what you're going to keep getting. You yes. have to have, and you don't have to have full belief. You don't have to have full excitement that like, this is possible for me. You need 1% more than you don't. One mm. sliver more than you that. don't. Because that's just enough to get your toe in. That's just enough for you to hang on to, to be like, you know what? Maybe it's not exactly like what she's doing, but I, I think I could get just about as happy as Stacey. Like there's no, re yeah. there's no reason I can't. I exactly. can get just about as much as, as confident and comfortable in my skin as Renee and, and dance around. There's no reason why I can't. So what can I learn from her? Instead of trying to mimic and do everything exactly the same, which is I'm speaking from something I have done, which is like, okay, how do I... I need to be this person. I need to talk like uh, her, walk like her, mm -hmm. act like her, dress like her, eat like her. And kind of like what you said in the beginning is that we don't need, I don't want you to your students. I don't want you to be like me. I don't want you to think like me. I want you to be more you. And so mm -hmm. I think finding those people that you can be around that opens up a part of you that you're a little scared to tap into, but really mm -hmm. wants to come out can be mm -hmm. really, really fun. And yeah. for me, you know, what's interesting is that I feel so wild and crazy and fun and free that sometimes I go a little bit more towards the opposite. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, some of the people that I work with are are a little bit more reserved. And it's because I, 
and 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 like more detailed and and fine thinking and critical mm-hmm. like they spend more time on this because I want to get better at that. Oh. And so I think, you know, every single t- person's personality is needed by someone else. Every single mm-hmm. person's gift is needed by someone else and I think that's a really important thing to remember because sometimes it's easy to get trapped in this. Like I, well, I have to be happy and I have to have body suits and dance around. And it's like, no, you don't, but you get to find out what is actually authentic and true to you. And that's the best place to be. Of course, I'm kind of in for your body suits and I'm also (laughs) in for your (laughs) t-shirt. The last one you had count orgasms and not calories. Like that's, I'm always out there talking, like, let's have some orgasms. Yeah. Like, let's more like instead of whatever yes. else bullshit is out there yes. that we're focused on. So I am, I am watching going, yes. And here's something that I think is, is kind of related to this. I also believe like this, our soul, like when I think of our intuition or whatever, inner knowing, whatever we want to call it, doesn't dangle. Like if we feel a little envy or we feel like, oh, like that would be nice. I would like to do that, but I could not like, instead of like using it to shut ourselves down. Mm-hmm. I now, this is my own practice. Like what about Renee? Yeah. It, 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 there's a message in there for me, right? There's something in there that maybe it's not going to look apple to apple. Mm-hmm. Although again, I'm in for some of these <laughs> things. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Um, but, but it, but there's something there. And I don't believe that inner knowing or soul dangles that in front of us or nudges it within us. We feel it mm-hmm. to say, you can't have that. You, yes. That's not for you. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, that that's a breadcrumb mm-hmm. that is for you. So it makes sense when you say reserve people, because absolutely you're this breadcrumb mm-hmm. of like, Ooh, how do I give myself more permission? Yeah. Again, not only to have more fun and make it easy, but this kind of topic we've been we've been diving into, which is self-trust. Yeah. How do I trust myself mm-hmm. in ways that again, my first step or my first three practice, it look a lot different than yours, but the energy, the feeling, I always am attracted very much to people's feeling states mm-hmm. more than anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like Ooh, that feels really good. And it feels in alignment with what that person is all about. Mm -hmm. Like you can have the most perfect person talking about, I don't know, whatever, any of these topics Mm -hmm. and then feel the disconnect. Yep. Right. We've all probably had that too. And so I always go, Ooh, energetically, I want to sync up with people that are not necessarily the same as me, but I feel that they are showing up in integrity. Yes. And I, I love that you brought that up and that is a one great exercise of self-trust. It's like, it doesn't need to make sense. Like mm-hmm. there can be 15 of your people can be like, she's amazing. I love her. Oh my God. And you can be like, I don't know. Like something's <laughs> just not hitting quite right there. And like, totally trust that. Trust that. They, you don't have to have a good reason. I think we always want to justify yes. like, okay, but why? Tell me why. It's like, who the hell cares why? My, I just don't. It doesn't matter why. I just don't. Yeah. And, and you know, it can be because it's telling you something you want, or it can just be like, I don't know. We just don't jive. The yeah. end. Exactly. Well, and, and I'm just, th- I'm listening to you and it's like the same thing with like a salad. Everybody, I was at dinner uh, not that long ago. Everybody's mm-hmm. ordering a salad. I'm like, yeah. I don't want a salad. Yeah. And then I felt this urge at one point when it came around, like we were ordering that somehow I needed to be like, I'm not, fe- whatever, something that needed to come out of my mouth. And I'm like, mm, I don't need anything. I don't want a freaking salad. Yes. And period. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a great example of just like, oh, I don't want yeah. that. Yeah. Love. It doesn't Love. feel true. And I think, again, when you start to build that self trust, you're building that relationship with yourself that you are able then to be in some of these situations. And again, instead of it just taking you down, I was laughing at myself. I was like, oh, here I go. I get to practice. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of like everybody else is doing one thing. I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. The mm-hmm. old me, Renee, I don't know, 20 years ago, would have totally yep. ordered a salad. I yep. would have. Yep. I, I because totally. it's, the right, it's the right people thing please. to do. Yep. yep. Oh, I absolutely. And I grew up in a Catholic upbringing and there were definitely rules about what was a good girl and what was oh, a bad yeah. girl and what to I'm do and what sure. not to do. Mm-hmm. And it's a practice of deprogramming. But I, this is what I love about you. 
you have this energy of how can it be more fun? Yes, this might be lifelong work, but it doesn't mean that we have to toil in the basement of the library yes. and be miserable doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Because who wants to do that? Like I would never. Exactly. No, thanks. No. So what, when people come and they are sabot, I like, I'd love to talk just briefly about, mm -hmm. you know, self-sabotage because I mm -hmm. also, I don't know, this is a place where it's gray for me. I'm mm -hmm. always like, are people actually self-sabotaging or is there some really good reason underneath, right? Maybe it's a belief that they're, we're not aware of that's creating whatever the behavior is that's stopping I, I don't know. I don't like, I'm always like, hmm, is it sabotage? Not so I'm so I'm curious your, your perspective on this. And I would love to learn from you. So I think it's very, very often a belief about themselves that they tell themselves over and over. So I see a lot of women sabotage themselves in, in work and mm. it's because their deepest core belief about themselves is I'm not good enough. Yeah. And so when time for the promotion comes, they shut down a little. They don't really ask for what they want. They don't show up the way they want. They don't speak up the way they want because internally there's that you're not good enough. And we we do want to confirm our own thoughts. You know, this is the same thing with food stuff is like, I, I just can't trust myself around sugar. I just can't. I can't be trusted around sugar. Guess yeah. what's going to happen the first time you and sugar are left alone together? You're going to go <laughs> ham on it. You're going to eat all of it. You're be like, I knew it. I can't. I'm never <laughs> again. It's and like your brain's like, yeah, do it. I want to prove myself right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is is our own thoughts about ourselves. And then, you know, the other one is just that habit that we – Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is true a lot for procrastinators is you get mm -hmm. in that habit of just like, and I think that's because procrastinators usually almost always get it done. And so they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know why I procrastinate. It's like, well, because you get it done in the It's working power. for you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so I think part of that is to begin changing some of those habits as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, you know what? I am not, I wouldn't call myself procrastinator anymore because I really try to pr practice no labels, but I am the person who likes a little deadline and a little bit of like, sure. and, and I just go, that's who I am. I like a little pressure sometimes and it works for me. Yeah. And, but that comes from a different level of trust with myself than, oh, I'm bad. I'm a procrastinator. I do this bad thing. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I actually like a little bit at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's more about making peace with that for myself and saying, that's a part of me that maybe, you know, again, has been judged or I've judged myself yeah. for that actually really works really well. Yeah. I mean, and that's, around. that's true self-trust right there, right? Yeah. Of just, oh, actually, this is what works best for me. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dairy makes me fart. Actually, I, I mean, whatever it is, you know, it's like, Seriously. good, know those things about yourself. And it, it, you don't, again, you don't have to explain it. I know that I don't do well after 6 p.m. Like my mm. brain shuts off. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a night person. I don't yep. care to. I don't want to socialize after that time. I want you to leave me alone. I want to be by myself. I'll get up at 4 or 5 a.m. and climb mountains and hike and have a great time. But like, Nights are just not my thing. And so I you. know that about myself and I design my life around that to work towards my strengths, yeah. work towards your strengths. Yes. You know, it's funny. I, I had a little stint in HR years ago and, um, we, everybody hated performance reviews. Well, I always reminded me of the episode of Seinfeld where it's like Festivus. Let me tell you all the ways you disappointed me. Who? <laughs> Why, why does anybody want a performance review? And at the time, my manager and I discovered Strength Finders, which mm -hmm. I, I yep. don't know if you're familiar yep. with that. But the concept was instead of focusing on your faults and mm -hmm. trying to fix them over and over and over again, which there was so much science and research like that doesn't actually work telling people you suck at this and <laughs> so you need to do it better. Yeah. Like that never worked. <laughs> yeah. And so we played around with telling people what they were really good at and then using that, right, to empower people mm -hmm. to hone in on, ooh, how could you delegate, right, if this was something that you weren't, like how do we then share responsibility and tasks and all mm -hmm. of the things? But again, I think part of what 
stops a lot of us from thinking, oh, I'm going to use what I'm good at or I'm going to capitalize is that somehow then like that's not the right way. We need discipline it's and cheating. hard work. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm like you. Let's if that's cheating, let's do it. I'm a cheater. <laughs> Call me a cheater because I'm in. <laughs> I am so in as well. And I'm laughing about the night thing because um, I went out, I do meditations locally and, uh -huh. and I did something at five o'clock and I go, God, it's like the middle of the night out here. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. Yeah. I go, and I always tell people, I was like, I know this sounds a little crazy, but I don't care. I was like, I don't do evening things, yep. generally speaking. It's mm -hmm. a rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. So I feel you on that. And and again, just the practice of like creating that boundary with people mm -hmm. and just being comfortable. Like you said, you don't have to explain. It's like, yeah. hey, this is just, this is just it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I love this. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so Renee, as we start to wrap up, I want to just pull a thread. I love to just like pull something out of our mm -hmm. conversation today. Mm -hmm. What do you think if you're listening or watching, like what would you want someone to kind of play with, practice, have some fun with after this episode? What would it Oh, I think you? a fun question would be for that, for your listeners to, to play around with is that if I really did trust myself, what would I do? Like just, yes. would I go to the gym? Mm -hmm. Would I eat this thing? Would I order the salad? Mm -hmm. Would I wear these mm -hmm. clothes? Would I make this conversation? Like if I yeah. really trusted myself, if I really had my own back, what would I do? And oh. just see what comes up. I love it. Okay. I love it. If you're going to ask that question and you're in my everyday enchantment Facebook group, you're going to have to, we're going to have to talk about this some more. I cannot wait to dive into that with folks. And Renee, if, if people are like, yeah, I need some more Renee in my life, where can they find you? How can they get connected? What's What's yeah. happening exciting in your world? Tell us. They can visit me on the old Instagram. Be ready. As you, as we mentioned, there's a lot of bright colors and metallic bodysuits and dance videos over there. <laughs> so it's a good time. Um, also my website, Renee Sager. And you can, I mean, I'm on Facebook, but not really. I would say um, Instagram and uh, my website are the best. I also do have a podcast called Ditch the Binge that people can tap into as well to, to hear a little bit more about my message. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. It has been yeah. a true pleasure uh, to have you as a guest today. And thank again, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. That's it for now, loves. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Get all the juicy details and links we've mentioned in the show notes. If learning more about how you can use your own enchantment to live a oh hell yes life, come get your own coaching session with me by going to stacyandon.com and signing up for my homepage. And as always, come chat with me about this topic and all things enchantment in my Facebook group, Everyday Enchantment. See you on the flip side.